this accident was actually caused by the victim, who uh, it seems was a former TV host who was despondent over a show being canceled. Yes. Well, this isn't good. In fact, it's about as bad as it gets. I'd like to see some, some fire, if it's possible. Well, you can see some fire, plenty of fire, all the fire you want. He's champion. When you have your colonoscopy, can we come in too? <laughs> This episode of Somebody's Gotta Do It is gonna be a total disaster. I'll visit a city where it's all right for everything to go wrong. Can anybody hear me? Yo! Are you trapped? I am trapped. As long as you're ready for anything. So the moral of the story is always have some foam nearby. So that's my foot. I uh, sprained it last night. Yeah, that's disgusting. So I'm gonna go now and get my foot x-ray to find out if it's sprained or if it's broken and my mother and father are gonna help me. Mom? I'm supposed to be in Texas shooting. Instead, I'm in Baltimore getting shot by that. Luckily, this will all be documented by my Cracker Jack crew, my parents. So it's not that you shot some room, Mom. Uh, close up to your hair. Hey, baby. All right. <laughs> Oh my god, just when you have your colonoscopy, can we come in too? <laughs> awesome. I'm getting creative. This is called creative. Nice. Tell Doug to eat his heart out. That whitish area, right? That's the swollen part. I've got both areas, Mike. Look at this. I'm going to Disaster City. I'm I think you're in Disaster City. What are you shooting right now, out of curiosity? Um, what you? was that? You're supposed to be jumping out of something? Yeah, they, they simulate disasters there. Turns out disaster was averted for the time being. In the process, I've honored my father and mother and done what I can to ensure the show goes on. I see a lot of normal. To me, that means I can go to work. Which means I'm off to Disaster City in the great state of Texas. I just want to make sure you are ready. <laughs> is this it? Wow, this is pretty big. Oh, it's massive. Yeah, big is an understatement. This place is actually an extension of Texas A&M where they've created pretty much every kind of emergency scenario you can think of. They've got building collapses and train derailments, airline crashes, tornado search and rescue, and fires galore. My plan was to try and give you a sense of the place by walking in the boots of America's first responders. Instead, I'm wearing a slightly different type of boot and assuming a less glamorous but far more common role. Victim, first stop, moulage. A fancy word for disaster makeup. How do you spell moulage? M O U. M O U. L A G E. L A G E. It's French, I believe. Yeah, French for disgusting. We'd like you to do moulage. It looks like they've been in a wreck. We could mm -hmm. hit them here. I wanted to go right up the elbow, too. The goal is to apply a healthy dose of gore makeup to make it seem more realistic. In the old days, victims wore signs that read broken arm or multiple lacerations. This is way cooler. So the reason this is important then is because it conditions the first responder so that the first time they show up in an actual real life situation, it doesn't feel like the first time. Correct. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. Come on over, say. You were a, you were a paramedic yeah. back in the day? Firefighter paramedic, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Look at my ankle and tell me <laughs> what you would do. <laughs> Just ice and Advil, man, you're gonna be all right. Yeah. That's all there is to it? She needs to find her ace bandage, right, Kathy? We got an ace bandage someplace. Okay. Yeah, it's official. My ankle's still sprained. In fact, it's starting to feel a lot like my arm looks. What is that technique all about? It makes a splatter. So you use a toothbrush. There you go. Brush your teeth with that one. Okay. All set for disaster training. Or Halloween. They're going to drill the hole. A little R2-D2 camera is going to poke through. It's going to look at you. They're going to yeah. assess you visually, and they're going to determine that you're not uh, in the line of where the breach is going to occur. Right. And this is something we always do for, for safety. The camera comes back out of the hole. They're going to tell you, Mike, we're going to start breaching. You're going to get all kinds of jackhammer action going. Yeah. They're going to create a hole. They're going to then cut through the rebar that we build into our panels. They're going to come down over to you. They're going to strap you into something that basically is a big orange burrito. And then you're going to come back over, and we're going to pull you up. And then we're going to pull you up top here out of the top, and that's where you meet Billy. So in real time, I get in there, we start shooting, you start drilling. The time you get through there, get me in the thing, pull me out, hoist me through and take me out, it's probably 45 minutes from 45 now. 45 minutes to an hour, yeah. So do you need to pee? I just did. Good to go. <laughs> that was the next. <laughs> Still am. And done. So I've assumed the role 
of a victim. Finally, my ships come in. Smitty, You're up. shall we? Yep. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't good. In fact, it's about as bad as it gets. You're in a parking garage, you're minding your own business, and there's an earthquake, or a bomb, or any one of a hundred other disasters. Point is, you're pinned in a car, and there's not a thing you can do, except pray, and wait, and hope that somebody comes along with some jackhammers, which I'm assured is about to happen. Search and Search rescue. And rescue. Search and rescue. Can anybody hear me? Yo. Hold on. Search and you rescue. Here? Hello. Hello? Yes. Are you trapped? I am trapped. I'm what, in a car. What, yeah. you're, in, you're in a car? Yeah. OK, what, what type of injuries do you have? Are you bleeding? Yes, I believe I am. My arm does not look like an arm. OK, what, what, what's your name? My name's Mike. Mike, OK, we're, we're from Search and Rescue, and we're going to try to get you out of here as quickly as possible. That would be great. OK, we're going to. My plan was to join the guys on the roof with the jackhammers and punch our way through to save an unfortunate victim. Plans change. Mike, I'm going to stick a camera in this hole so you're going to see something come down through there, and I'm going to get a visual. All right. Normally, I hate to act in a nonfiction television show, but this whole place is basically one giant simulation. And besides, there's no shortage of cameras pointing at me. You got another GoPro in here. I didn't even see you. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I don't know that there's ever been this many cameras pointed at me at once. Here at Disaster City, we're about to resolve that cliffhanger we left you with. Will I be saved from the wreckage? All right, Mike, we're coming for you. I'll give you a hint. I will. I'll tell you what, if you can lay your head back. Right. Gently. There we go. Down right here. You'll be able to ride on it. You all right, Mike? Oh, all right. good. OK. If I can get you to come down here, please, okay. and then I'll get up there, and then we'll uh, lift him right out. OK. Yeah, I'm a three-man job. One, two, three. All right. You OK? Yeah. All right. One, okay. two, three. OK. All right, hang on. You want to? You got him hang from on. there? Yes, we'll get oh. his leg. OK, hang on. Let me get some good leverage here. Mike, this is, this is going to be a little bumpy when you land, OK? All right. Well, it's not quite Lazarus, but if these guys can lift me out of here, it'll be a minor miracle. Okay, rotate him back. Jack, yeah. he's clear of the hole. Nope. Oh. <laughs> he's getting off here. All right. okay. He's been rescued. One minute I was in a Nissan 300 in a collapsed garage. Now I'm up on some grading. Courtesy of Daniel and Joe. And who, who was that? Was that Smitty? That was Smitty. I couldn't really tell from this angle. Great job, guys. I'm heavy, aren't I? Not, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you be honest. <laughs> it was a scene like this that got Disaster City started by the somebody I'm here to meet, a career firefighter named Billy Parker. After the bombing of the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Billy realized there was no training facility for that particular circumstance <sighs> and a whole lot of others. Since then, Billy's been on the front lines of some of the country's biggest disasters, from 9-11 to Hurricane Katrina. Tell me what just happened down there. Well, we were simulating a bombing in a parking garage, like yeah. the 93 World Trade Center bombing. Right. Disaster City is a complex that we built to train Texas Task Force One, our urban search and rescue program. Mm -hmm. Billy also has Parkinson's disease, struggled with it for the last 12 years. He comes to work anyway, every day. You can see several different buildings of different types of collapse to right. simulate real world experiences. The collapse over here was simulating the 1985 earthquake of Mexico City. This is amazing, really amazing. So are, are, are you guys all firefighters or paramedics or both or? We, Some of both. We're staff we here full time. Full time at Teeks. Full time staff. We help bring in the instructors from around the country that teach the classes here that prepare people for these kind of disasters. Gotcha, so you guys will be with me all day? We'll be around. You'll be around all yes, day? Sir. All these people being around all day. Well, why don't we go over to the firefighter area 
I'd like to sit down and talk with you more there and then just kind of wander around and get a sense of what goes on. Okay, look forward That's to it. Right. Let's do that. In this world, we have tribulation, but you already knew that. Recent disasters like Hurricanes Harvey and Irma put the spotlight on the need for trained first responders, known to you and me as heroes. Taylor, you're wide. I'm starting on you. When'd you get in to firefighting, you remember? Well, a good friend of mine was my youth pastor, was a fire chief when I was in high school. Yeah. And uh, he died in an explosion. And it got me to thinking, that's something I'd really like to do, serve with a fellow man. How many people do you think you've trained personally, or Disaster City has trained just in the whole area of first response? The fire schools trains 81,000 people a year on average. <laughs> have for many years. Yeah. You love what you do? Love it. Granddad said if you get a job you love, you never have to work a day in your life. Um, you have Parkinson's disease? Yes, sir. What's that like in terms of affecting your work? Well, I can't do something like I used to. But you're here every day, you're engaged. My mind's clear. Yeah, all right. What can I see here today? I mean, I've only got a day with you, so I'd, I'd like to see some, some fire if it's possible. Well, you can see some fire, plenty of fire, all the fire you want. All right. Well, that concludes my interview with uh, Billy Parker. To sum up, wonderful guy, totally dedicated to what he does unfailingly modest, humble to a fault, simply refuses to say nice things about himself, so I have to walk away from him uh, in order to do it, uh, which I'm happy to do. This place is a, a monument to him, a testimony to what he considers to be most important, and uh, everybody seems to love it. He's also wrestling with a difficult disease and uh, not bringing it up or complaining about it. So as I run down the imaginary checklist in my head, he's a... Uh, He's champion. So I wrangled a seat in a golf cart and got myself hooked up with a driving tour from Billy and Robert Moore, who's the director at the Brayton Firefield. All of these props simulate uh, an industrial type situation. Over on this side, you have the, the concrete buildings. This is where our municipal guys go in and learn how to deal with interior structural firefighting. We pride ourselves on having the most realistic industrial props in the world. When it, I mean, that's such a big claim. I got to think that, Yes, sir. I mean, all over the world, people must be focused on the same kind of thing. What, why is this so superior? The reason that I can say that, that these are the most realistic is we train firefighters from all over the world, not just here in the United States or in the state of Texas, uh, that come to these uh, our training facility, but then also we are hired or are contracted by a lot of different training facilities all over the world to come in and help them design their industrial props. So you've been all over the world doing We've this? We've been all over the world doing this. You, you, you respond how you train. And that's why it's so important to have realism because they're gonna respond in a real situation just like they, they train at any training facility. For better or worse. For better or worse. What's the old proverb? train up a child in the way he should go. Yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm at the Brayton Firefield, where I'm about to get schooled in the proper way to put out a gigantic chemical fire. All right, I'm just slipping into something a little more, well, a little less bloody, and then I'm gonna put on some turnout gear. And we're gonna put out a fire. That's all I know. We wash this off. I think you'll leave it on the face. That'll sweat off. Thanks, Vinny. I was put off by the no entry sign. Yes. <laughs> That's to keep the riffraff out. Okay. The guys are helping me get the proper gear together, but I seem to be missing one important item. What's up with the mustaches here, man? Everybody's got one. Back in the old days, the firemen used their mustaches to filter. But this is before SCBAs or anything like that. They'd take a wet handkerchief, throw their mustache in front of it, and then they would yep. put it in front of their face and they'd run Is that it. true, really? You guys aren't just... That's folklore, no, brother. I don't know if it's true, but it's what yeah, we're yeah, taught. Yeah. It's gonna be hot out there, isn't it? It is. It is. Hot. So, kind of the rule of thumb is, is that you're not going to burn for more than about 10 to 15 minutes before we take you out of gear, let you cool down. There we go. What do you say? 
Well, they say you're not going they won't let you burn for more than 15 minutes. <laughs> That's all I heard. Yeah, you'll only burn for 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, you'll barely burn at all. I'm not gonna lie to you, Mr. O, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> Jimmy's assembling a nest for me right now. So do you have drills where you just rehearse getting dressed over and over and over and over? We do, uh, especially with the new guys. The fire department I work for, you have to have all this gear on in 90 seconds and be on the truck. It's like a survival suit up on the yes. Bering Sea or something, right? Something yes. goes bad, you're like... Yep. Okay. That's part of our job is when things go bad, that's when we're there. Yeah. So. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been a firefighter for 20 years, but I've been at the current department that I'm at for 14. So. And what's the name of the department exactly? Uh, the Bryan Fire Department is right up the road. Got it. And so, what do you do here specifically? Are you a uh, Specifically here, I am a marine instructor. Uh, I teach uh, shipboard firefighting and offshore oil rig firefighting. Don't put on your jacket until you get there. You don't want to overheat, but you do want that on. Taking so long over there. Well, yeah, you know what? When you're dehydrated and sweating to death, we'll see who's laughing. It's quite warm. It's already hot here in Texas, and now it's getting hotter by the moment. If you want to just carry it over there right now, it's a warm little walk to the other side. Thanks. That's a good tip. As opposed to my man, Nick, he's gone. If there is truly no greater love than a man who lays down his life for a friend, these guys are training for sainthood. There are a lot of you. Everybody's got the same mustache. Look at that. <laughs> Scenes like this are impossible to capture, but it's fun to try, mostly because you get to watch things melt. My audio guy, Chris, knows he's going to lose another microphone, but he clips one on me anyway. So what we're watching right now is basically, this is a chemical fire mm -hmm. on top of water. Yes. So is it oil, is it gas? What exactly it's is burning? Diesel. So this is just regular water right on the... This is regular water. Ultimately, you would want to use foam, but what we do is we teach these guys how to do it with water in case they run out of foam. We're getting ready to take our dry chem team in, so if you want to come with me. I do. Let's go, that's Sam. All you do is stay there and look pretty over there. Been a while since I melted a camera. Let's do that. When in doubt, follow the guys who know what they're doing. Trust me on this. Tell me again what's in here exactly? This is sodium bicarbonate. This is what it is. It's so. baking soda. Yeah. I'm going to spray a little baking soda on a fire. I don't feel as though we put that out. That's definitely not out. So the moral of the story is, always have some foam nearby. Yeah. You're dealing with fuel, you want foam. Got it. Foam for fire, water for Mike. How long have you been doing this, John? Uh, 30 years. In a row? No. 30 years <laughs> in the industry. John's an offshore <laughs> oil rigger from Liberia with platforms all around Africa. And when his various licenses expire, this is the place he comes to renew them. I've been to many of these, but this is by far the best. What makes it so good? The fact that it's, uh, it's what these guys are going to see. Yeah. If they do get in the fire, when they get in the fire, because it does happen. Not if, right? It's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, you got to assume it's going to happen. five or six myself, so. What's it like, I mean, fighting a fire on the, on the high seas? You only right have there. 220 feet in any one direction. <laughs> well, you mean that's the size you gotta, of your, your platform? you got to put it out. Yeah. you got 30 years yeah. in. I'm looking around, I see guys here who can't have oh, more than... 18, 19-year-olds in there. Right. Talk to the 18 or 19-year-olds who are watching now, who are like, yeah, I think maybe I'll be a fireman, maybe I'll do that. You know, what, what don't they know? What should they know? You, you train for it, and you just got to prepare yourself mentally, you know, and, and the training builds like muscle memory. There you have it. Training, practice, leadership, 
and a healthy dose of guts. That's what's on the menu at Disaster City. But it is fun, right? No, actually, it is. Yeah. yeah. Hey, who doesn't like to light a fire and put it out? You know. I was just saying, deep down, you know, there's a little, there's a little pyro in, <laughs> yeah, exactly. in, in everybody here. A big part of working on any disaster is having to deal with the press. So here, they not only teach you how to put out literal fires, mm -hmm. but also the kind of heat that comes from a 24-hour news cycle. So you have people here who are also yelling out questions. Yeah. At the, who's ever standing behind the, the podium. Yeah. I'd do that. That'd be fun. One person located had been trapped in the parking garage. Task Force One was able to successfully extricate that person from the garage. The person had sustained injuries to his left forearm and suffered a sprained ankle. I'm sure they said, what can you tell us about the victim? By uh, very like low, handsome. devastatingly handsome man. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Well liked by yeah. dozens of people. Of All right, so that's the job. Somebody has to do this. Somebody has to be a public information officer. Somebody has to stand in front of a podium and, and relay the information uh, at hand and, and take questions. I will do that. Oh, jeez. Sir, the press corps has been assembled and they are uh, ready for your statement. Okay, then off we go. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to make a brief statement before we take questions. This morning, at approximately 9.30 a.m., an explosion occurred in the government building in Disaster City, Texas. One person was located that had been trapped in the parking garage. Texas Task Force One was able to successfully extricate that person from the garage. Good news. The person rescued sustained injuries to his left forearm and suffered a sprained ankle. If there are any questions, I can take Sir, them. Who, who are you? 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 Yes. I'm the uh, I'm the PIO. Do you have a name? You can call me Mike. Next question. Who do you represent, Mike? Uh, I represent uh, the uh, the citizens, the people who are watching. What agency are you with? Uh, I'm with no agency at this point in time. Yet. Is there any truth to the rumor that this accident was actually caused by the victim, who uh, it seems was a uh, a former TV host who was despondent over a show being canceled? Yes. At this point in time, we're not ruling anything out. Mike, uh, Mike, I have a, a question. Were yeah. you able to speak with a person who was trapped, and were they able to share any of their thoughts and feelings while they were in the rubble? I can tell you that the person who was rescued uh, exhibited uh, extraordinary levels of, uh, of gratitude, uh, relief, and um, a kind of ennui. You mentioned that the victim here had a sprained ankle, and I noticed when you came in that you were in a walking boot. Listen, the world is a, um, an unusual place fraught with coincidence so you're admitting this was done on purpose it's not really germane to the facts that we have here this has been fascinating i appreciate all of your questions oh, <laughs> let's just call that a uh, learning experience how'd i do uh, pretty good yeah are you, are you gonna give me something yes sir well, we appreciate your time here yes i'd like to present to you with our school helmet that is uh, <sighs> You sure you wanted to say instructor? Yes, sir. I'm not sure I, I earned that, but that is really, really great. Billy Parker, thanks so much. Billy Parker trains people to run into situations that most of us would run from. That's not a job, that's a calling. And thank God these people answered it. Keep them in your thoughts. And the next time you see them on the news, responding first to whatever calamity comes next, keep them in your prayers. As for my ankle, oh, that's feeling better already. It's a simple little shot. Really? It's me. Walk in front of the Disaster City sign. Don't know how we use it, but I suspect there are probably a bunch of ways. It could be kind of fun. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs>